Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. I sure will be glad to get back to Dodge, Mr. Dillon. Oh, Wichita is a nice town, Chester. All right, you like it so much. Next time you can come along, I got no business here anyway. <laughs> it's almost over. The train leaves in about ten minutes. I've been worried all morning we might miss it. Yeah, it's going to be a long ride. Uh, why don't we wait outside here till they yell all aboard, huh? My, you sure do hate setting down, don't you? Ah, I like fresh air, Chester. Bet you can go on if you want. No, no, I'll wait. Well, you could be finding us a couple of seats. You know. Mr. Dillon, the Santa Fe guarantees a seat to everybody who buys a ticket. <laughs> I was only trying to give you an excuse to get off your feet. Well, I ain't tired of all that. Hey, hey look what's coming. Where? Hmm. Oh. Hey, you're a pretty girl, isn't you? Yeah, she is now, ain't she? You suppose she's going to Dodge, too? Well, why don't you ask her? Oh, my. Goodness, Mr. Dillon, I don't even know her. <laughs> I couldn't do it. It's not going to stop him. Uh, who? That gentleman standing by the car. He's seen her, too. Gentleman? Looks more like a drunk rowdy to me. Uh, let's kind of walk over that way, huh? Mm. Say, maybe he does know her, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I doubt it, though. He's too mean and ugly looking. Uh, I'll tell you now. Traveling together, we should all at least get acquainted, huh? My name is Laster, Ab, Ab Laster. How do you do? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm meeting my partner in Dodge, Joe Garrett. Have you known him? I'm sorry, but I've never been in Dodge. No, huh? Well, <laughs> you know what makes two of us. Well, of course, at least we ain't gonna be lonely, are we? <laughs> well, that depends. Depends on what. If you're a gentleman. <laughs> oh, honey, sure I am. <laughs> yeah, I know now. I got a bottle here. Why don't we get aboard and, and we'll have us a little drink? Huh? Please, Mr. Lasker. <laughs> Come on. Lasker. No, we... look at that. I... Well, no, what's the matter with you? Start out being real friendly and then you freeze up. Come on, we'll get in that train like I say, and I'll buy you a little drink. Let me go! Hey, mister. What do you want? Let the lady go. <laughs> You're looking for trouble, ain't you? No. He tried to force me onto the train. He wanted me to drink with him. Now, don't you worry, miss. He won't bother you. He won't mind in it, not till you bust it in. Ab Laster, huh? Hmm? How do you know my name? Well, I heard you tell the lady. Real snoopy, ain't you? Sometimes. Do you know what you're getting into, mister? No. Why don't you tell me? I'll show you. You're packing a gun. But I don't always use it. You hit him. 
this gun safer with me. Here, Chester, put his gun in your belt. Yes, sir. No, he's going to be awful mad, ain't he? What? I'll kill him? I swear I'll kill him. He's going to fight some more. No, he isn't. Get on the train, mister. You tricked me. Get aboard while you can still walk. Mister, we get to Dodge, you're going to wish you'd never seen me. I'm wishing that already. Now move. I'm... I'm sorry for all the trouble. There's no trouble, miss. I didn't mean to get you into a fight. It wasn't your fault. But I, I always feel that it is. What? Why, just my being a woman, I guess. You know. <laughs> well, there won't be any more trouble, miss. Not till we get to Dodge, anyway. <laughs> Come on. Let's get aboard, huh? <laughs> If you're a real coffee drinker, you wouldn't pour water into your coffee. No, you want it for real. And it's the same when it comes to smoking. Why settle for a watered-down smoke? Why filter your fun? Smoke for real. And remember, nothing gives you so much real full tobacco flavor and real all-out pleasure as a Chesterfield. Like they say in the Chesterfield song, and if you smoke for real, smoke Chesterfield. A real high flying, satisfying Chesterfield. Because you get much more of what you're smoking for in Chesterfield. They're for real. More real flavor. More real pleasure. Check for perfection by Accuray. They satisfy the most. Try Chesterfield. What do you think of Dodge, Rena? I can't tell much from the depot, Marshal. Oh, we'll show you the rest. Uh, Chester, uh, go get our baggage, will you? Well, I... Yes, sir. <laughs> Dodge kind of frightens me, Marshal. Oh, why? Well, I, I'm only a woman, and I've heard so much about the terrible things that go on here. Now, don't you worry, Rena. Nothing will happen to you. I do feel safer when you're around. Marshal! Oh, uh, excuse me a minute, Rena. It's that same man. Yeah, what do you want, Lester? Now, they tell me that you're Marshal Dillon. Well? And now there's two of us, Marshal. Here's my partner, Joe Garrett. Lester says you made things bad for him in Wichita, Marshal. Oh, uh, is that so? He says you stole his gun, too. He can pick it up at my office sometime. I just don't like what you did, Dylan. Well, I didn't do it for you, Lester. All right. Now, we're taking some horses up north for a few days. And then we'll be back. I'll be here. I'll be here every day. What did those men want, Marshal? Nothing, Rainer, nothing important. I'll bet there's going to be more trouble over me, isn't there? <laughs> now, don't you worry about it. We'll find your room, and then I'll take you over to the Long Branch and introduce you to Kitty Russell. She's half-owner of the place. Oh, come on. Chester's waiting. Oh, how have you been, Doc? Oh, fine, fine. 
Chester's been telling me about this little new girl, Rena Decker. No. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Sounds like a mighty sweet little apple. <laughs> is that what Chester said? No, I, I didn't say that at all. Well, that's what you meant, Chester. But is it true, man? Well, you can go see for yourself, Doc. I think she'll be working at the Long Branch tonight. Oh, oh Kitty hired her. Ooh. Well, I left them talking together about an hour ago. Good. I'll drop by that night if I have time. Oh, you'll find time, Doc. Well, I will if some idiot doesn't fall off his horse, or jump out of a window or something, or go get himself shot. Leave him die. Oh. It'll be worth it. It'll leave him. Leave him die. It's a good thing nobody has to depend on a sybarite like you, Chester. I don't know what that means, but it sure don't sound nice. Then don't ever let me catch you saying it. Oh, it's Kitty. <laughs> Come on in, Kitty. Join the fun. I'm afraid I'm going to spoil the fun, Doc. Oh, what's the trouble, Kitty? I thought I'd better come tell you before you hear it from her, Matt. What? Rena Decker isn't going to be working at the Long Branch. Oh? Well, why not? I didn't hire her. You didn't hire her forevermore. I... Oh, I... Well, I'm not saying she isn't pretty and all that, Chester, but I've seen her kind too often. They mean nothing but trouble. Well, I don't understand, Kitty. She seems like a nice little girl. You men are all alike. Pretty face throws you every time. Now, Kitty, I have no interest in her beyond trying to help her the way I'd help anybody. Who started that fight in Wichita, Matt? Well, I had Blaster. He was annoying her. She didn't lead him on, huh? Oh, now, Kitty, you're being unfair. That girl's here all alone. She doesn't know anybody, and she needs a job. Sure, and when I had to leave her at the bar a few minutes after you brought her in, she almost got another fight started. Now, why would she do that? Some women like men fighting over them. I see. Now, uh, Kitty. Hmm? What really is it that you don't like about her? Doc hasn't seen her yet, huh? Yeah, no, 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 but I'm sure interested now, Kitty. Yeah, you'll be just as stupid as they are. Now, Kitty. All right. Just to show you, I'll hire her. But don't blame me when somebody gets killed, because it's bound to happen. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what, Joseph? Looks like Miss Kitty was wrong, don't it? That's been two days, but she didn't put any time limit on it. What do you think it is she's got against Rena anyway? Oh, sometimes a woman takes a dislike to another woman, and nobody ever knows exactly why, Chester. They're sure hard to track, ain't they? Oh, they got their ways, I guess. <laughs> but then so have we. Yeah, that's right. We ain't always so plain and simple, are we? Where are you going? Those men in front of the long branch. They're going to fight, Mr. Dillon. Look at them. They're about to draw. Hold it, you men! They're both down. Go get Doc, Chester. They look dead to me. Get him anyway. I'll see if I can find out what this is all about. Yes, sir. Anybody know these men? Well, I didn't see you here, Kitty. Hello, Matt. Maybe you know these men, huh? Just a couple of riders. I don't even know their names. Well, what started it? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Oh, what do you mean? Talk to her about it. Who? Oh. I'll go with you. All right. Marshall, Marshall, wasn't it terrible? I was so scared. Rena, uh, have you any idea what started this? Oh, I don't know, Marshall. I, I was talking to them at the bar, and, and they suddenly got mad at each other, and they came out here. That's all I know. What were you talking about, Rena? Nothing. Just talking. Then why'd they get mad? You know how men are. Yeah, I know. I know how some of them are. I'll see you later, Matt. Hey, yeah, sure, Kitty. Marshall. What, Rena? Sometimes it's... It's an awful burden being a woman. You understand, don't you? I don't know, Rena. I'm not sure what I think. Who'd 
want a steak without the flavor or a rose without the scent. No, you want it for real. And the same thing goes for smoking. You smoke for real, so why filter your fun? Why not go for all-out enjoyment with Chesterfield? Chesterfield, checked for perfection by Accuray, gives you more real full flavor, more real smoking pleasure. And if you smoke for real, smoke Chesterfield. A real high-flying, satisfying Chesterfield. Because you get much more of what you're smoking for in Chesterfield. They're for real. More real flavor. More real pleasure. Check for perfection by Accuray. They satisfy the most. Try Chesterfield. There for real. Mr. Dillon, I sure would hate to be buried that way, like them two fellas. Nobody not knowing who you are, not even a marker on your grave. It's a sad, poor way to end up. Yeah. It's been troubling you, too, ain't it? Some, yeah. You've been awful quiet since yesterday. I've been thinking, Chester. Oh, uh, I'm going to the long branch here. You want to come? Sure I do. They're pretty busy, ain't they? Uh-huh. Hello, Matt. Chester. Hello, Miss Kitty. You weren't at the burying, Kitty. No. Uh, is Rena around? Right over there at the bar, with two men, as usual. Oh? Mr. Dillon, look at that blaster and that Garrett fellow. Yeah. I didn't know they were back in town. It didn't take Rena long to find out. What do you mean? She brought him in with her when she came to work. But then, of course, she and Lasser are old friends by now. Now, Kitty. Why don't you go over to the bar there, Matt? Have a drink on the house. Why? Eavesdrop a few minutes. You might learn something. <laughs> All right, Kitty, I will. Yeah. Mr. Kitty, could you see you? Right, uh, Rena, honey, it sure is good to see you again. Oh. <laughs> Are you really going to take me to dinner, Mr. Laster? Oh, why, sure, honey, you bet I am. <laughs> what about me? Ain't I invited? Huh? Well, I guess that depends on Mr. Laster. Yeah. <laughs> well, some other time, Garrett. <laughs> this here's going to be my night tonight. Well, you make it sound like Mr. Garrett's not wanted. Well, he ain't. You don't have to treat him like he's a... like he's a dog. Well, I ain't treating him like he's no dog. Am I, Garrett? Well... Of course you are. No man's going to put up with that, is he, Mr. Garrett? Well, no. No real man is. No, by golly, now you take it back, Lester. Huh? Oh, go on, Garrett, go on, leave us alone. Well, I ain't oh, taking wait. no more. Get your gun out, Lester. All right, Garrett, that's how you want it. Wait a minute. You killed him. You killed him, Ab. Give me your gun, Lester. No, give it to me. How you expect to take a man's gun when he's already got it in his hand, Marshal? Don't be a fool. He killed him, Marshal. Don't let him get away with Shut him. up, Reno. Don't back away now, Marshal. You stay where you are. Reno's tricked you into two fights already, Last. Are you going to let her do it again? Stand still. She likes men fighting over her. Don't you see that? Leave her out of this. Now stand still. You put up your gun, Lester. No! Oh, 
Oh, Marshal, I, I was so worried. I, I thought sure he'd kill you. Oh, I was so scared. Marina, four men have died because I wouldn't believe Kitty about you. What? Now you get out of Dodge. Now. And don't ever come back. It's not your fault, Matt. Yes, it is, Kitty. And I hope you never let me forget it. what you'd miss if you filtered a kiss. No, you want it for real. And it's the same with smoking. Why filter your fun? Why not enjoy the all-out smoking pleasure of a real cigarette? A Chesterfield. Chesterfield gives you more real rich tobacco flavor. More real smoking satisfaction. Cigarette after cigarette after cigarette. And if you smoke for real, smoke Chesterfield. A real high-flying, satisfying Chesterfield. Because you get much more of what you're smoking for in Chesterfield. They're for real. More real flavor. More real pleasure. Check for perfection by Accuray. They satisfy the most. Try Chesterfield. Real. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Lynn Allen, Lawrence Dobkin, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Who'd want a steak without the flavor, or a rose without the scent? No, you want it for real. And the same thing goes for smoking. You smoke for real. So why filter your fun? Why not go for all-out enjoyment? And if you smoke for real, smoke Chesterfield. A real high-flying, satisfying Chesterfield. Because you get much more of what you're smoking for in Chesterfield. There for real. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.